Radio. Welcome to another exciting episode of Coffee and Radio. I am Heartthrob Rob, and today we are watching Young Rock Season 2, Episode 8, Corpus Christi. The bio here reads, Texas, 1996. Dwayne's first match will be for the WWF. After meeting legends and future legends backstage, he soon discovers there's more to the match than just the moves. He needs to get a hostile audience to care. Really, really, really good episode here, man. Probably the best episode of the series, if not number two. Definitely the best episode of season eight or season two so far. Uh, episode eight here, Corpus Christi. It's a good episode if you are a wrestling fan. It is a really good episode if you just like you know the show as it is. If you just you like Young Rock, it's just a really good episode. Um, and we it's right off the bat. I mean, the whole episode is about the Rock getting his match with WWF. So he gets the phone call from WWF and they want to try him out. He's got to fly out to Corpus Christi the next day. But he don't got no ring trunks. So he meets a legend to get some trunks. And who does he meet? But, um, but Tonga, you know, Haku, who hooks him up. And dude, like they, this episode has nothing but straight history the whole time. Like we get to see, uh, they show him biting a dude's nose off. They show Haku biting a guy's nose off before he, uh, before he talks to The Rock and he's like, oh man, I love this story, but I need to get these trunks. So The Rock gets the trunks and he's boom, he's right up to Corpus Christi. He actually gets picked up by the Brooklyn Brawler and the Brooklyn Brawler gets ready for their match. And in the back, that's where we see all these legends. And it's so cool because 1996 is such a cool time. It's right before the Attitude Era really explodes, but it's after the Hogan Era. Hogan was just there three years ago, but now we have you know, Stone Cold Steve Austin, a.k.a. The Ringmaster, Hunter Hearst Helmsley, who becomes Triple H, Mankind, a.k.a. McFoley, The Undertaker, he's got the mask going. It's just a really cool time. We have Mantar, we have uh, the, the Sheik. It's just, it's just a really crazy time. But, I mean, it's really cool to see his interactions with The Rock, or excuse me, The Rock's interactions with this uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin character, knowing what it's going to become. They have the bio and the stats for everyone. is really cool. The actor does his voice, Stone Cold's voice, dead on. It's really cool. Uh, the actor that they get for Triple H, you know, him and Triple H and The Rock are already getting into it, and you can tell that they just don't fucking like anybody. Uh, you know, that click... You know, that click kind of thing is already in gear, right? Where And he's talking about who he's going to be the Intercontinental Champion soon. So this is obviously right before or right after. Um, or this must be right before uh, the curtain call. It's a little bit of tidbit craziness. So Mike Michael Hayes is there and he tells Rock he's got six minutes with the Brooklyn Brawler. But he's going to go over tonight, which is unheard of in the, in the game of wrestling. Where you're going over on your first night and Mankind tells him, Hey man, you, you know, it's, that sucks for you because... Now you got to get a crowd response out of this people, you know? So The Rock is all shook, and they go to the ring, and, you know, everybody's like, who's this kid? And nobody cares. They're sitting on their hands pretty much, you know? But God damn it, if he doesn't listen to his dad in his head, sell and make them care. And as the Brooklyn Brawler's just wrenching it in and wrenching it in, he gets the crowd to care, and he goes over, and, you know, Vince likes his stuff. And, you know, they do a voiceover where The Rock had a second match later on. He loses that one. But then he has his big, but he does really great in his match. In his first match, he does really good. Six minutes, everybody loves it, puts him over. He has this meeting with Vince, and Vince says, Hey, man, I like your stuff, but you're too green for t my television. We're sending you to Memphis. You're going to learn your thing in Tennessee. So he's going to be working for Jerry Lawler. But a really good episode here, man. Uh, I loved uh, Stacy's, uh, Atta's, uh, uh, has the quote of the day here, or the quote of the night with, uh, She's so excited, you know, she tells uh, Peter Maivia to, you know, wake, tell everyone, wake up Jesus if you have to. Uh, so that was definitely the line of the night. Best episode so far. I think they really know that we have to get to into The Rock's wrestling career for the show to like really, really pop. But a really good episode, man. I really liked it. Best episode of the series so far. Maybe, uh, you know, for wrestling fans. Uh, definitely the best ep episode of season two so far. But let me know what you guys think, man. How cool was it to see all this history on The Rock, to see Brother Love, to see just every wrestler they had out there. I loved seeing uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, the rivalry with Triple H. Just seeing all this 1996 was so cool to me. That's my era. I'm nine years old at the time, so I couldn't get any happier. But let me know what you guys think. We'll talk about it in the comments. Make sure you like, subscribe, and if you like what you're watching, then hop in the coffin. Follow us on social media at Coffin Radio. Coffin spelled with a K. And that's all for today. Radio.